Hello, 40 Waters. Longtime listeners of the show will know that I'm a big believer in education, especially music education, and I'm excited to announce that this episode is brought to you by Truefire. I've partnered with Truefire to bring you an opportunity to get into their lessons at an affordable rate in a way that's going to help you help the podcast and get you playing more guitar. I'm excited to say that you can use the code 40 watt 40 W A T T at checkout to get 40% off your first or next purchase through Truefire. That includes their all access pass to have access to all of their lessons and videos and jams. I highly recommend it. I use it myself. I'm a huge fan. I truly believe in Truefire's motto of live, practice, and play. Please use the link below to get started and happy learning. This episode is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. There's a wonderful crew of people over on Patreon giving money every month to make sure that this show and this podcast happen and cut my overhead costs so that I can keep doing it. I can't express my thanks enough for their support and their belief in what we're doing over here. And if you'd like to join them and help support this podcast, you can do so by going over to patreon.com slash 40 watt podcast for as little as $3 a month. You can support this show. And actually at now that uh, we are starting to get sponsors for the episode, my $3 supporters will get the episodes ad free. Uh, if you want to support at a $5 level, you'll get ad free episodes and you will get additional content every week. I thank all of you that have given money to help keep this going, and I thank all of you that are going to become supporters and help make sure the show keeps happening. Thank you so much. All right. And we're going. All right, we're for a real starting this time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, not, not the false starts we've had. All right, 40 Waters, welcome to another episode of the 40 Watt Podcast. This is Take three because steve and i keep deciding to talk about things we can't say on the episode sorry maybe a few of them will rehash on the patreon episode if you want to go over there uh you're not a patreon supporter you say well that's really easy just like the thing at the beginning that you've already heard said go over to patreon.com slash 40 watt podcast and you can support the show three dollars a month gets you ad free listening uh and five dollars a month gets you uh, this episode ad free and a bonus episode i kind of stole all those things from guitar nerds that's exactly what they do i just don't do the early because <laughs> half the time i'm recording this episode the night before it airs so <laughs> hey, i can't put it out early as long as it eventually hits yeah, exactly. As long as it eventually lands, we're going to get there. Anyway, so this week I'm pumped. Uh, Steve and I have actually, we stole somebody else's podcast for an episode together. We chat in Discord all the time, but we've never sat down and recorded an episode. So uh, Steve Rao from 60 Cycle Hum, if you're not aware, or, you know, as some of you may know him as Stevis from the artwork on the big ears, <laughs> Stevis and Burkhead pedal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, getting getting those, getting those getting those mad model royalties, right? Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> so, uh, Steve, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing all right. I can't complain. I'm uh, actually I messed up my back yesterday, but you know, hopefully, so hopefully, you could complain. Yeah, well, hopefully by the time this hits the uh, hits the interwebs, um, my back will be. I'm not hold, I'm not crossing my fingers. <laughs> this one's this one's pretty <laughs> rough. I feel like I'm about like uh, 75 years old right now. It's not great. Yeah, man. Welcome to. Are you 40 yet? No, got. I got some no. time. Oh, oh man, just wait, just wait. You think your 30s were bad? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> my my 40s have been great so far. I mean, I'm not very far into the 40s. I'm 41, so mm. but so far they're fine. Um, no worse than the 30s. Um. But yeah, as I said, you're from, uh, you are the other side of 60 Cycle Hum. Uh, you are the, uh, it feels like the organizational force keeping Ryan together um, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. You that, pull Ryan a, back yeah, from the brink. That's at least my character on TV. <laughs> I'm not really a type A, but I play one on TV. Yeah. Um, so let's, um, since you probably have talked, I mean, y'all have been, I, I y'all are well over what 400 episodes at this point for almost 400 and yeah, something odd. I don't I th know. I think today's uh, so we're because we're recording, you know, a few days before this launch launch it. Um, 
launches. Uh, so we record, Ryan and I will be recording, I think, episode 453 this week. Um, so that works Man. out to something like, I think it'll be nine years in January, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's nine years That's in January. That's pretty wild. That's pretty insane. I technically started this podcast in November of 2020, but I did like two episodes and then waited till January. So I'm calling January my mm. new... Mm -hmm. uh, my anniversary at that point, but, um, I'll be two years for me, but that's a whole lot of episodes. So I'm sure at some point the backstory has been told. You're going to have to forgive me. I've oh, not yeah. gone back and tried <laughs> to listen to all the old episodes. There's no way I, I'm not that person. I'm typically a person that finds a podcast sure, and picks sure. up wherever it is. I started. So let's, let's give the listeners an idea who you are and, uh, why they should listen to you. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, um, if you don't, I would say 60 cycle hum is a podcast for people who uh, are fans of, of uh, riffs, beards and gears, ridiculous reverbs episodes. If you like those uh, and you want to listen to like eight years of them, you can check out the 60 cycle hum guitar podcast. Basically Ryan and I, um, the, the story is, is, uh, is basically uh, of the show. Uh, so Ryan and I used to be in bands together. Uh, we've known each other for for probably about eighteen years, nineteen years, and um, sure. you know, but maybe nine years ago, uh, he goes, "Hey, have you ever heard of this thing called podcasts?" I go, "No, what the hell is that?" So we're kind of start listening to podcasts, and we were always listening to like my brother, my brother and me. Uh, that was the one mm -hmm. I listened to a lot. And then we would, I would sit at work and he would be at work. Um, and we would just be watching our local Craigslist for deals. And, uh, if we saw a deal, especially back then, like there was, there wasn't eBay was like, if you were savvy, you, you could do eBay reverb didn't exist. Right. So there was this whole, you know, Facebook marketplace didn't exist. So there was this whole market of where you could buy something on Craigslist for cheap. Then you could turn around and sell it on Revit on eBay, or if it was like a oh, busted up guitar, whatever, you could buy it for cheap on Craigslist. And this is what I did for a while. Excuse me. Uh, buy it, clean it up, slap a fresh set of strings on it. Doesn't work. Well, it's because you're you know you twisted on the output jack too hard, broke <laughs> broke a, broke the ground plug. You know, thirty minutes of of you know of. I, I would always say like, oh, it's 30 minutes of work. And most of that is waiting for your soldering iron to warm up. Um, <laughs> so it's like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. And you could, yeah, you I had could, one of those soldering irons too. Okay, so then you could flip, you know, you could flip this stuff. Um, so uh, we would send these ads back and forth just over a well instant messenger. That's how long ago it was. Um, and, uh, and then one day he goes, Hey man, uh, this week let's, uh, he, try this thing. He's like, I think this could be a really good podcast. So this week, let's not send any ads to each other. Let's just get, get them, save the links, uh, take screenshots of the, of the, of the ads. And then let's get together this week and just record ourselves talking about these ads that we found. And I think we would throw in like topics. We would find topics. Uh, we actually started the Facebook group really early. Uh, uh -huh. in the run. So that way we had somewhere for if people would say like, Hey, what do you think about these new amps from Marshall or whatever? Then we could be like, who cares? Marshall sucks. Fender, Fender, Fender. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's like stuff like, like stuff where it's like, we started crowdsourcing really early, uh, because it's hard to like, uh, we, we didn't want to be another like news podcast. It kind of felt like, well, there's people who yeah. do that. Um, this is use gear, like kind of the nitty gritty DIY thing is what we felt like we were good at. And so that's kind of the lane that we chose to be in. So yeah, if, if you know, if two guys riffing on a guitar where it's hand painted and it looks like the story is that uh, this woman smoked drugs while pregnant and gave birth to a wheelchair kid. Uh, if that sounds like something oh you want to hear two God. guys talk about, then uh, check out the show. That was a recent one. That was uh, that was like a month that, ago. That was. That was. I was going to say, or you know, guitars made of bones that a guy claims he got from his uncle. Yeah, and, yeah his uncle's bones. Uh, you know, we should have saved. We should have <laughs> saved that one for Halloween, and we didn't. Huge mistake. My 
man, that guitar, what a wild story. <laughs> so, so yeah, I've been listening to y'all for a little while now and, uh, I, I don't, I do not remember how I stumbled across your podcast at all. I don't, I can't remember that far back. I barely remember what I had for breakfast this morning. So, um, oh yeah, no, I get that. I don't even know if I had breakfast yeah, this morning. <laughs> Actually, did I have breakfast this morning? Yeah, I did. Okay. It took me a second. Um, that moment of dead air. It was wonderful. Um, <laughs> but no, so yeah, I've been listening. It's a lot of fun. Cause that's, you know, I, I've talked about on this podcast a bunch, how that's what I did to, to make spare money and to not make a living, yeah. but you know, cause I was a college student, but that's how I made my, you know, beer money and my, you know, walking around town money was I would go into pawn shops and I would go into, uh, whatever we had a trade winds magazine, which is basically like a statewide, mm. you know, classified ad type thing. So I would look for things there. Um, and I would, man, I would trade anything. Like I, I got, I, I remember one of the best deals I ever made was a trade winds ad where the guy listed a seventies Ludwig drum kit and he listed it and said, uh, beat up, got all these other extras. He listed, you know, no, no brand name, no nothing. And it was like 300 bucks. And I was like, oh, I'm wow. calling that guy. So I went and checked it out. And it was like this full on seven piece Ludwig con uh, like concert top. I don't know what the proper term. They don't have a bottom head. Like there's not even lugs oh, to attach okay. a bottom head. Um, and so he had that. But he also had a Gibraltar rack system, a full complement oh, wow. of cymbals, a DW double bass drum, a Yamaha popcorn snare. Like he had all this stuff, 300 bucks. Good grief. Yeah, the Dude. DW double kick is like, a, a, depending on the series, and this is why my show works is because I'm just recalling this. Uh, I think the 5,000 yeah. series is like what 150 bucks brand new by itself. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it, it, a was a, it was a, it was a 7,000 oh, series. So it was, uh, it was, like, it wasn't the good. Well, that's, that goes the opposite way with DW. So that go goes opposite? down in quality. Yeah. It goes opposite. So 5,000 is their like pro level. Oh, okay. And I think 3,000 is even better. 7,000 is like the cheaper one, but even then that's like a hundred bucks. The Gibraltar yeah. rack, yeah. I think I sold for 300. I was going to say the, 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 those Gibraltar racks are big money. Yeah. yeah, I sold the kit for another three hundred. I sold the popcorn snare for like a hundred and twenty. I was like, "That's that's what I used to do." You know, yeah. find that person who just has the thing they just need to get rid of. I, heck, uh, I live in a college town now. Earlier this year, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, school was getting out, all the students were leaving town, right? So I I'm constantly looking at Facebook Marketplace, and somebody was selling one of those uh, Alesis, uh uh, nitro mesh drum kits, electronic drum kits, right. 75 bucks. I oh, messaged wow. him. I said, where are you? I'll be right there. I turned around, <laughs> sold it for three fifty that week, you Jeez. know? Yeah. It's uh. so the deals are still there. Yeah. You got it. It's I, I don't remember who I was talking to, but, um, the thing that, uh, somebody told me recently was basically that the deals are still, still there. The difference is that you need to, be like your net has to be bigger like you have to know more yes so it's like i i don't know enough i know i used to know enough about i know enough to to have been able to like flip drums 10 years ago i don't know enough to right. be able to flip them now i don't know you know enough to sell drums at sweetwater so <laughs> um <laughs> uh but yeah we can and, talk and about I think, that later i think Oh yeah, we definitely will. Um, so I think, I think it's true. I think the deals are still there, even in the age of the internet where everybody can see it. Cause here's the deal. People will always need to sell something quickly. Mm -hmm. You just got to be one. You've got to always be looking. This is what I used to tell my friends when I went before I moved where I am now, where I was, they were like, dude, you always find deals. Like, how do you do that? I said, one, I'm flexible in what I'm looking for. I'm not necessarily looking for a certain thing. Um, I'm, you know, whatever pops up that happens to be a good deal that I think I can turn around. I said, and two, I am always looking. Yeah. I, I never stop looking. You, you're constantly searching, uh, which is not good when you're an adult with adult income and you have, you want all the gear in the world with like I do. It's how For you sure. accumulate. For junk. sure. Yeah. 
but yeah, it's, it's an interesting way to go. And I love the fact that that's how y'all started. Cause I think that's what, what I related to that. was like immediately I was like, Oh no, I get this. I, yeah. this, I, this makes sense to me. I think so. You know, a lot of listeners, a lot of people, uh, are more familiar with the with Ryan's YouTube videos than, than the podcast. Sure. And actually, sometimes it's like infuriating because uh, people will come on to um, the will jump on YouTube and leave comments on the podcast episodes that we started filming them even like years ago. Uh, but people will jump on and be like, I came here for pedal demos, not to hear two guys talk about nothing Urgh, like angry. And I'm like, <laughs> If two guys didn't start talking about nothing, this channel wouldn't exist. For like, well, not only that, it's like, dude, you can click to the next video. Yeah, like no, seriously, exactly, exactly. you're you're staying here voluntarily. Yeah, and I think like I think uh, on a lot of these episodes, like it, we start with you know, uh, this is oh no, I guess we don't necessarily say what the episode number is. We maybe we should, but it's in the title. You know, it's uh, you look at it. Yeah, it's right there. Take Thirty seconds. You know, to look at the description. This is this also kind of leads into like uh, my my hot take on the current state of Twitter, where Elon Musk is banning people for impersonating oh. him, and I don't really yeah. understand it because he is the only at Elon Musk. Like to right. me, it's really obvious. Just to name the most the, the biggest named one or the most storied one is it's really obvious when Elon Musk's handle is at Kathy Griffin that the message is <laughs> not from Elon Musk. Uh, Appar- apparently he reinstated her today. So, oh yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I know. But I have but not been like on the, Twitter it's today. Like you, it's like when you get the scam emails, and it's like, uh, oh, Home Depot, you've won a ten thousand oh. dollar gift certificate. Oh my gosh! Just. And then you look at the address. Well, first of all, I won't even talk about the grammar and the spelling and the weird, like, uppercase, lowercase things that happen there. <laughs> but the email address, it's like, just email us back at, and the email is like, Home Depot giveaway at clickbait.youreasucker.com. You know? <laughs> it's, it's literally that bad. Um, it's literally, you know, uh, again, it, it, we, there's, I, I need to I need to go live. I might do a live stream someday where I actually <laughs> I actually so one of the big problems uh, that we've been having. Oh, f- first of all, going back. Uh, so yeah, so after we did the podcast for I think a year, one of our friends said uh, uh, who uh, introduced us to um, Josh Scott um, introduced uh-huh. us to Julie Robbins and Jamie Stillman over at Earthquaker. And basically said, uh, these guys do a podcast. Um, do you think you could hook them up with some gear? They'll talk about it on the show, record some demos and whatever. So it's like 2000, uh, you know, late 2014, 2015, something like that. Whenever it was, we went to our first NAM. Um, and, uh, and so we got that stuff. And so that's when the YouTube stuff started going. And now the YouTube channel is big enough that... We get these Telegram scammers oh, uh, yeah. where you leave a comment and someone replies to you and they've taken your logo and they've made it their profile picture. But their name is uh, – so it, their name used to just be like 60 Cycle Hum Giveaway or you know 60 Cycle Hum Contest. And then the body of the message would say – would be like, hey, contest us on contact us on Telegram at – excuse me, at 60 cycle hum uh, because you've won a prize. And they would send like a hundred of these out. So first of all, I'm yeah. like, one, you really think we're going to give away a hundred things? I don't know. You sent out a hundred reverbs. We, we sent out like 250 reverbs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then two, but two, it's like, uh, so I, I have, I have screenshots because I messaged one of these people and go back and forth. Oh. And they're like, okay, I had to figure out what what it was because I don't know. Uh, you'll, I think you'll know right away. I had a f- f- inkling of what it was, and then I had to look it up. Sure. When I say uh, Bloomfield VOS, do you know what that is? Vintage old stock. The, I mean, that's VOS to me. Yeah. So if I say Bloomfield VOS nineteen fifty nine, you know what I. 
You know, yeah, yeah, it's it's a Bloomfield uh, burst. Yeah, so it's, it's a Mike Bloomfield, it's a Mike burst. Bloomfield signature uh, or VOS. They did a VOS for Mike Bloomfield like ten years ago, yes. fifteen years ago. So that was the prize, the prize that I won. And so then I I went in this down this rabbit hole of, oh oh wow great did you ever like do you have any videos I'd love to I'd love to tell my friends what I won, I I'd love to mm-hmm. see a video of it. Oh no, no, I didn't make a video, and it just turns into this whole thing where I'm asking like, like, but aren't you a demo channel? If you are before you give away a ten thousand dollar guitar, don't you think you should do a demo of it? And. <laughs> they were just like it was just this run around and then it became do you do you want the guitar or not and all of this over like a the oh in order to uh ensure the shipment you know you need to send 50 dollars oh, and yeah. whatever but i'm scared to know how many people they actually get with that. i, I don't That's know the thing they keep doing it because it works yeah and then people reach out to us on instagram people facebook um, we've gotten emails. Hey, I just, I just won this thing. Um, I'm really confused. What am I supposed to be doing? What's, what's telegram. And so we've gone through right. and we've set, set certain words like telegram, which if we ever do the mm-hmm. triple graph, it's going to, going to be a problem because <laughs> we're going to have a lot of legitimate comments going straight to our, uh, our, uh, automatic review review. Yeah. Um, but what they do now, these Telegram commenters, is their name will be contact us at 60 Cycle Hum on Telegram. That will be their name. And then the message will, I, we literally got this one where the message was just the up emoji. I have seen those. <laughs> I've seen those because I commented on, uh, you know, I had Jeremy Shepard on the podcast yeah, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And uh, I commented on one of Jeremy's uh, po- episodes. And sure enough, I had one of those scammers that it popped up on mine and every other comment on that thread. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's, like, it's I, bad. It, it reminds me of, so I'm, I'm, uh, I hold, I've held for several years various offices in uh, a state organization that I'm in. And because our information, like who we are and e- emails are on the state association's website mm-hmm. or were, I think we've changed that now, but. Um, I would get emails and it was somebody who has spoofed their email to look like, uh, someone else in the organization. Oh. And so it'll be like, it'll be an email from the president or the, of the organization or from the treasurer of the organization. And it'll say something like, Hey, Philip, I've got a vendor who has an issue, uh, and I'm out of town. Can you take care of paying this invoice mm-hmm. and I'll mm-hmm. get the money reimbursed to you when I get back? And it's, surprisingly legit looking yeah but if you look at the email address and you know their email address you know it's wrong but like one day i went down the rabbit hole of like let's see how far this goes and how this actually works right Mm -hmm. and i emailed back i was like yeah absolutely i'll be happy to take care of that what do you need me to do and they said oh awesome thank you for taking care of this if you will and they sort of proceeded to like if you'll take care of this via venmo (laughs) first of all and then like go down this whole rabbit hole and then they give me a Venmo that's obviously not that not the person that I'm dealing with, yeah, right? Yeah. And so what I did is I went all the way down, all the way to getting the Venmo and I instead of sending the money, I requested the money. Mm-hmm. Just to see if they would accidentally hit just click it cuz it was like it was like I don't know, $2100 something Jeez. like that. And I was like, please accidentally click to send me 21. <laughs> because what are they going to do? Are they going to report me to the authorities yeah, for stealing right. the money they were trying to well, steal from me? It's Venmo. Once it's done, it's done. Like, there's no legal recourse. It's done. Recourse. It's my money. Yeah. Yeah, that's I try, my money. I tried to do that with Cash App, but apparently there's a setting on Cash App where you can set your account to receive only. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's like... I didn't know Well, that. it's like, so you will... If you get a cash request, it will be automatically denied. Um, so I think, oh. I think, you know, from their end, they could send money, but they can't receive a request, um, to send. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't get a decline. It just left hanging there. Oh. It just sat there for a long, long time because this maybe before that was implemented. Yeah. I did see, um, I watched a, I think it was a TikTok or something, Instagram reel, Facebook 
something or other. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> YouTube short. Yeah. But uh, uh, where somebody said that they um, sent one of these scams, they the scammer asked for $100 and they sent $10 and uh, and said, oh, shoot, I, 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 I left off a zero. And then she requested $90. And the person was like, oh, well, they sent, or had already sent me 10 So they were expecting a message for $90 yeah. and just did not look at it. I, you know, <laughs> they could have been. See, making, that's what I was trying they, to pull they, off they with the, the 2100 So that, yeah. So the secret is you got to, uh, you got to give them $21 first, and then you got to ask for 2100 And, ah, oh, see, that's what I should have done. I didn't, oh. Next time. I'm ready next time it, now. It's wild, though, yeah. and it must be working um, because otherwise they wouldn't do it, right? Well, I will tell you that it's working, and this is this is such a sad story, and I won't tell you. It's a, a, a company my wife used to work for. Um, I'm going on LinkedIn one, now. Yeah, I know. But luckily, my wife is not on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, it, uh, my wife worked in accounts receivable and payable, mm, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one day, <laughs> one day, a woman who worked there who shall remain nameless, which is good because I genuinely can't remember her name <laughs> right now. Um, but, uh, and Kelly had to, you know, my wife re relayed all, Kelly relayed all this to me. So, yeah. but so their first awareness that something was going on was when this person came and asked them if there's another company credit card. And they're like, wait, what? She said, well, the other's maxed out. Do, do you have, is there another one? And they were like, why is the company credit card maxed out? And she proceeds to explain that the president of the company oh told God. her to go buy a bunch of Amazon gift oh cards. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Our Luckily, it was one of like the petty cash cards. So it was like a small dollar amount yeah, but still. credit card. But still, yeah, it was. It was still, you know, four figures the, worth of Amazon gift cards. The IT department at my company actively, like we do, I, apparently it's called micro learning. I learned this term this week, mm -hmm. uh, but we get like once a month, a like short video on like, it's a little comedy sketch on uh, information technology. And then, you know, every six months or so, they send out emails to random people impersonating people you know, the CEO oh, wow. as just a test of like, and one of them literally was, Hey, uh, can you, uh, I'm out of town. Uh, I want to do some gifts for all of the people on staff. Can you run down to, or for like an upcoming raffle, can you run down to Seven Eleven and buy a couple $50, you know, Google store gift cards or whatever. And, yep. uh, and so now that one, you know, if you reply to the email or whatever, then it is going to be like, gotcha. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so don't, don't reply snarkily like I do. Well, the, the, uh, Cause they did a bad one recently where they sent out links. This one uh, got a lot of people. Um, they sent out Man, clicking links yeah. and emails. Well, they impersonated like different people in different positions. So I got one impersonating HR. Um, so one of the people got someone, they got one that was like impersonating somebody in, um, I think in the finance chain and they managed at least in, so the one that I got was like, here's a folder for like eight upcoming HR initiatives. So that kind of thing is like very yeah. enticing. I looked at it and I was like, huh, and I floated the link and I was like, this is not a SharePoint link. This is like some random thing I've never heard of before. Right. Um, and then I looked at the email address and I'm like, this is not one of our email addresses. This is, this is a fake, but one of my coworkers got one and he had been working on uh, an inventory control project, uh, trying to like locate a bunch of equipment and make sure like yeah. what's still in use, what's not in use. And he got a link to a spreadsheet that was, basically on the topic of like inventory and he, and he just clicked on it oh, and it was no. like, gotcha. Oh no. Now the most, yeah, it the most fun thing is like, I took the email address and I Googled the URL. That's like, you know, mm -hmm. 
at MaximumBusinessProfits.com or I don't know, something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, that sounds like a legit site. And when, like, l- not legit, just it exists. Yeah. So when you Google it, it comes up with a list of like a bunch of these websites that uh, the IT company has on like their thing saying like, if you use our service, make sure all of these websites remain whitelisted. Otherwise, our our integration won't work. So it's, oh, it's like, wow. it, so I found the master list. <laughs> uh, I didn't, you know, it's like, whatever it's, you know, it's, if you're, as long as you're being smart about it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really incredible that, you know, for our company, uh, we do this actively. And I, I know, you know, people that have been kind of in that same situation mm-hmm. who fortunately have not gone to Seven Eleven and bought, you know, uh, yeah. max out the petty cash card on on uh, <laughs> steam that's that's my favorite one is like when they ask for steam uh, yeah. cards it's like what are you what are you gonna do you're gonna buy the entire star wars backlog yeah. i mean what's yeah. going on I actually i could use a steam gift card i want to buy the uh, the the half-life box set but <laughs> oh yeah that would be cool i haven't played that in a long time but it, so it's just it's interesting to see the different scams that are popping up and they're they're all over YouTube they're, they're you see them all over um Instagram too although yeah. I, I feel like they've died down some on Instagram yeah Inst- but maybe they've died down because Instagram's dying it, I, don't, I don't Instagram know. Uh, I think Instagram is such a visual media and it's such a like um I know women who get sugar daddy requests that are, I'm pretty sure if you, they played out, it would be, well, in order for me to send you the $5,000, I need you to, you know, give me your bank information or something. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I could see and that. And then I, my favorite is the pr- message us to promote on such and such. Oh yeah. And you know, yeah. it's really like, oh, we'll promote you, but we, this fee and da, 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 Is da, it da. really? I, I, n- I don't know what any of those work. I'm, that's always been my assumption yeah. that it's like, oh yeah, we'll promote you, but it's going to cost you this much. Yeah. The Instagram, uh, I used to get the Instagram internet girlfriend ones a lot too. Oh yeah. And, uh, where it's like, oh, hi, I'm so-and-so. I just moved to town. Like. Oh, let's be friends. <laughs> Great. I, I used to get those the Facebook. That's where those used to happen. Yeah. It's on Facebook the, for me. You get the the fake account trying to friend you and then send you a message kind of thing. Yeah. Well, the astonishing one. So um, you see the ones on Facebook where they, yeah, they clone your friend and then they're like, yeah. you just assume that like something happened. So they started a new account. Uh, the ones that's rough on Instagram is when you get them and you're like, Oh, so you're telling me you're Charlize Theron? <laughs> no, my no, my name's Jennifer. Okay, but all of your pictures are of Charlize Theron. No, that's me. I'm Jennifer. People tell me I look like her all the time. <laughs> I've I've never engaged enough. It's just like instant block. Just instant. Just I'm not gonna mess with this. I'm not dealing with this today. It's. It, it's such a wild world of having to be super conscientious. And um, it was really funny. We got um, a, a library I used to work at. We ended up with a um, a patron clicked on a link that ended up being a ransomware. <laughs> oh, luckily, no. Luckily, luckily, we got, you know, quarantined the computer. Yeah. But we, we use this software called Deep Freeze. I don't know if you're familiar with no. Deep Freeze at all. So essentially you put deep freeze on your computer and you can do whatever you want to do to it. When you restart that computer, it comes back up untouched. Oh, okay. however you, however you froze it, yeah. like whatever the state of that computer was when you froze it, that's how it comes back. So like to do any updates or anything like that, you have to thaw it. Mm-hmm. You have to like unfreeze it. And so it was like, oh, ransomware restart. <laughs> it's, it's the most beautiful thing ever. But it's also it, it's not something you could put on like a daily driver type right. computer that you're right. constantly working on things. But like patron computers that need to go back to empty because I'm not going to tell you some of the photos I found <laughs> on public computers. Um, there are just some things that no one should have to experience. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's it's a necessary software on library computers, in, in my opinion. And it saves you from things like ransomware yeah, attacks. But yeah. people click on things they shouldn't all the time. So 
I'm gonna we're gonna move past scams. We're gonna move back into gear a little <laughs> sure. bit because we we talked about uh, talked about how you could sell drums for Sweetwater. So you went to Sweetwater, yeah. recently yeah. for Gear Fest, uh, which I was I was super bummed that it was like you know influencer invite only and then videos. Like I was hoping to go this year. I've never been to Gear Fest, uh, and uh, I'm I'm too small potatoes for Sweetwater, and I get that. Well, um, built do so spend the next uh, spend the next year and a half building up the youtube side of your channel i've noticed i i think sweetwater likes to partner with hungry people more you. you know more than yeah. anything so um we'll, we'll see it's uh but so y'all went up y'all did that yeah. and you decided to take the test right right to become a Sweetwater employee. Now, I know that there's multiple tests. There's like you take the test and then it's like, OK, you're still going to go through the training. Yeah. But, hey, you've got what it takes for us to start working with you. Yeah. Right. So my understanding and, uh, is that is the test that I took was the get your foot in the door test. I I so that video was really that video was technically on Phil McKnight's channel. Okay. Right. Am, am I right? Okay. Yeah. So um, that test that that video was interesting to me because. I wish every major musical instrument retailer like cared that much about the knowledge of their salespeople. Yeah. It's, I, I really do. It's wild. Um, so basically Ryan told me, Hey, Phil's going to do this thing. And I was like, that sounds really cool. Like that's going to be a really fun video. And I was like, Hey, do you think Phil would let me take it with them? And then Ryan was like, well, let's talk to him. So we just talked to him. I said, Hey man, like, um, I think you and I like we're kind of in the same mindset here. This sounds like a ton of fun. I don't know what the format is for how they're setting this up for you, but is there any chance like both of us could take it? And so he just went and talked to HR and said, "Hey, well, we got a second uh, influencer here. He wants to do it." So, yeah, Phil McKnight uh, set that all up and let me take it with them, and and so that was, uh, it was super fun. It was super fun. And you repaid him by smoking him on it. <laughs> Um, well, yes, yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's a, that test. I, there are certain sections I did. I did. I forget what section it was. There was one where I busted them on it because I think every question is like, there's five answers. And I think there was one section right. that, uh, he got like 19%. And I was like, Phil, that's, that's worse than guessing. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's, it's an extremely difficult test. Um, and I, you know, I think Phil did exactly. Both of us did. Were strong in what we thought we would be strong in, which is guitars. Like we both scored over ninety yeah. percent in guitars, and that's why we are guitar YouTubers. Like we we live right. and we're guitar social media whatever. You know, you're you're not into that DJ space. Is that I, what you're saying? The, dude, the DJ space is wild. <laughs> and so, and, and so, you know, you think like. Oh yeah, like uh what what's I mean what's uh I guess like what's what is a baseline knowledge for what you think a guitar salesperson should know, right? Like right. You know, well you should know you should probably know that if it's a what Dynason Dynasonic or a Filtertron pickup that that's like a Gretsch or Gretsch related product, right? You know, right. Um, you should know that a Les Paul is made by Gibson. Um, <laughs> but then, uh, like there would be a question that I don't remember the exact question, but the, some of the questions were in the style of like, what is a, you know, uh, I don't, I can't even think like I, what's an Iben as, you know, numbers or what not. It wouldn't even be what's an Iben as whatever. It would just be like, what kind of guitar is a, uh, you know, what, you know, Iben RG forty five seven. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so you would, you would maybe know, like, it would be like, Oh, Iben as uh, super strat, uh, Gretsch, you know, whatever, whatever. So you would at least have to have the knowledge to know like, Oh, that is an Iben S type model number. So you'd have to like, right. have that as a baseline. So for guitars, I actually think the guitar section, and maybe this is just because I approached it as a guitar player and as a guitar enthusiast, I, at this point in life, sometimes sure. I feel like I'm more of a guitar enthusiast than a guitar player. <laughs> um, but, 
like i feel like that's like basic knowledge kind of stuff right um right or at least like stuff you could figure out the stuff that like threw me off is when there were questions like a bunch of microphone questions all about uh different types of polar patterns uh, like cardioid hypercardioid super no cardioid, exactly and, and so you're sitting there yeah. going like like literally there would be and and it would just be question one question after another after another after another where you know you're sitting there and it's like i just googled this so it's it's up here but it's like there would literally be um you know i'm not saying this again i'm not saying this is a question but this could be a question like what type of polar pattern is a sure beta 52 well, if you're not in the microphone space, you don't even know what kind of microphone that is to begin with. Right. You're like, you're like, well, I know that that's a beta series, but you know, you, yeah. there, you there's not a lot to work there. You you either know or you're just guessing. Dead in the you're dead in the water. So you have no idea. There's a lot of stuff like that. The the recording interface stuff. It's you know, how many outputs does this interface have? And you're like. And some of them are tricky because they'll, you know, sometimes when these companies name their interfaces and they say, oh, well, it's a four by four interface. It's like, well, is that four inputs, four outputs? Is that the number of buses? Is that, you know, right? All the is that just the number of XLR inputs? Yeah. But there's actually like 12 inputs if you count the eight at in or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like there's this stuff where it's like you really have to know that stuff. And, uh, we, yeah. you know, we talked to them and they kind of said like, well, you know, if we see someone come in and they're exceptionally strong in a certain area, we maybe, you know, we, and, and it's not just the test. You also like have to basically take a sure. psych evaluation from what I understand uh, that you're not a, Oh, wow. I mean, I don't know if it's like a true psych evaluation, but they, I'm saying like they sit down. It's like an aptitude test. I don't even know if it's an aptitude test. It's just probably like more of like a. Can you have a conversation? <laughs> it's probably more <laughs> standard HR stuff, but are you a little too much of a sociopath <laughs> to work for us? <laughs> yeah, we, we need you to be the right amount, um, right? Just a little bit. But it's like so the test is one part. You could score one hundred percent on the test, but if you, you know, and when they're trying to ask you about your personal life, you freeze up and you can't get a word out yes. because you know you're just awkward or whatever or you can't handle the to talk under pressure about again your basic life then it's not you're not going to qualify for a job as a sales engineer yeah you're not going to do well where you're literal your job is to literally build relationships yeah. with people and people get i've had the same i've had the same sweetwater sales rep i think for like 15 years oh geez yeah that's wild yeah and, I, he he's been there a long time and people get real uppity about the fact that they call themselves sales engineers i i, I you know i don't really yeah. care whatever it's it's all they, just they titles. are they're building sales y'all yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're building sales shout out to 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 forest out there at sweetwater who does not listen to this podcast but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh he's he's been solid uh i uh, it's it their their whole business model is pretty impressive yeah. the way everything works i they're doing all of the things the right way for a for a company that wants to be a you know a massive national brand mm -hmm. like if that's if you don't want to be a big national brand and like you want to just be like the shop in your neighborhood the way they do it might not be the way you should do for it. sure like it's for sure. a, that's a different way to do it you need to you need to rethink all everything you're doing they're doing everything they can to be like this big national like service the entire you know anyone in the country i don't know how far they uh i don't know how far they reach if they ship to canada or ship to internationally or anything like that uh but they um i think they're doing all of it right and their sales show it so We'll see if they ever pass Guitar Center in sales. It'll be interesting. Kicking my kid out. Uh, yeah, no, I saw that. That's great. That was, that was well done. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's it's and th that was a comment that I think somebody made up there is that like Sweetwater's um, it's it's interesting. You would think Sweetwater's main competition is um, is like Guitar Center or something. But I think because yeah. uh, Sweetwater almost entirely exists in online space and guitar center i mean they exist in that space but guitar center drives most of its sales from brick and mortar still um yep. 
they they kind of I don't think Sweetwater really I don't want to say they don't consider Guitar Center as competition because I still think they have to you know bear that they exist, but Sweetwater's main competition I think is really more like along the lines of Amazon and and oh know, interesting that, that, that type of space yeah yeah that's not that that's not quite how I would have thought of it but that, I mean that makes a lot of sense. Because they are, they're an on, they're a single store with a large online marketplace. Yeah. So, uh, fraternity brother of mine, uh, right out of college, he got a job at, uh, he got a degree in music and audio engineering, but he had a background in business. So he ended up working at the Memphis drum shop in obviously Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and it's a, it's a really cool store. I think at, at the time, I don't know what the stats are now. I think it was the second largest drum specific music store in the country oh wow and it was and it was not real big i mean it was yeah. big but it wasn't like it, it, the average guitar center is bigger than the shop yeah. but it's a drum specific shop so um and he he was working there and he eventually got promoted to um head of online sales whatever the actual title is that's mm -hmm. what his job was he was the head of all online sales i said and this is like this had to be like 2012 2013 uh before i really got into buying online like i do now you know like i ordered from musicians friends sure like the rest of us sure. had um but uh i asked him i said so what's what's like the sales numbers look like between in you know in the store and online he said well um and listeners i'm going to use my hands but i'll describe it he said well if retail if in store is here and he put his hand up, mm -hmm. uh, he said online sales is here. Yeah. And it was yeah. just as far as his hand could reach up. It's like, it, it's the store stays open because of the online sales. Yeah. No, that's, um, uh, you ever buy from Pitbull? Yes, actually. But it's funny. All of my Pitbull stuff has come through reverb. So oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So Pitbull yeah. is, uh, so my, uh, I, at this point, he might be my old guitar tech cause he lives like a hundred miles away now, but, uh, oh, yeah. just cause when I moved, I moved away from Pitbull, but Pitbull has a small storefront down in the South end of San Diego County. Uh, but the vast, vast majority of their sales are online. And so if you live in San Diego, you can go and get your guitar worked on by my, my guitar tech, Sean, but from what I understand, um, and maybe I'm mixing up this story a little bit but basically he was originally hired because they all of the guitars that they shipped out get inspected first so he was just doing guitar setups oh. on just guitars that were they'd receive he would do a setup inspection and setup and then put it back in the box and it would get shipped you know that would get sold through reverb or get sold through their storefront or whatever and that was kind of their their business model so their shop um is basically a like i said a tiny little storefront mm -hmm. uh that's kind of like the front office showroom uh for a giant warehouse and what it okay. what it kind of looks like is you know if you've ever what it kind of reminds me of is like a granger if you've ever been into a granger i've never uh, been inside a, i've ordered from granger yeah. but i've never been inside if you've ever been inside a granger or inside of like I don't know, but it's like you go in there and they've got like basically one room in the center of the room is some like synthesizers and some live, live uh, audio DJ kind of stuff. And then on the walls to both the sides is uh, guitars and, gu and guitar amps and more guitars. And then at the front counter, uh, all their effects pedals and, and strings and, and that kind of stuff. But it's not, yeah, yeah. it's not, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. All the capo, just acres of capos. Yeah, I would guess that, in, at the front. that entire front office space is maybe, <laughs> I don't know, 400 square feet, 500 square feet. Oh, wow. Like, it's not huge. It's not, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's big enough to house all that stuff, but it's. Uh, well, if you, if you think about it, that Sweetwater is just that scaled up. Yeah, because yeah. as as big as the showroom is for Sweetwater, the warehouse is that much bigger. Yeah, I mean, I didn't go to the warehouse. I, I know a bunch of people took. Uh, I think early in the day, uh, when I was when we got up there, a, a bunch of people had already gone and done the warehouse tour. Um, mm -hmm. In hindsight, I kind of wish I would have done it, but I think they all walked. 
And I think by the time I would have gotten around to it, or maybe had I tried to do it from the beginning, I got COVID at Sweetwater. Oh so, yeah, that's right. Uh, and then I congratulations. Ga- and then I gave it to <laughs> no. I possibly gave it to Emily, and then Emily possibly oh, no. gave it to her husband from Get Offset, uh, Emily. So um, oops. Uh, yeah, but I didn't know until I got back because I didn't have any tests with me. Uh, so I just I just figured you know flight. Uh, super dehydrated, eating, you know, random food, jet lag, jet lag uh, had, had one beer too many, all in combination. Like, oh, I'm just feeling real rough. I told Ryan. Uh, yeah, you were. And then after <laughs> the fact, that's uh, actually the, the worst part is after the fact, I told Ryan, I go like, hey, man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just so you know, I tested positive for COVID. And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, you know, in hindsight, when you told me what how you were feeling and like described to me what you were going through, I should have realized that that's exactly what I went through when I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was brutal for me. I got it at a blues festival, Ooh. which was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was wonderful. Yeah. Um, so everyone, if you want COVID, just go to Indiana. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's just Indiana. All of Indiana is just COVID central. No, it, I mean, no. It was a real good I mean, time. Brian Wampler lives there, so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I know uh, they are hemming and hawing a few different things for Gear Fest 2023. I don't, uh-huh. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think they know what they're going to do I, at this point. I really hope they do something a little more open. Um because I, you know, they moved Nam. Nam is yeah. in April this year because yep. they're they're slowly trying to get it back to that January yep. window, right? I just, which at least that's what they've never said that. I don't think that's what we're all assuming. Well, is what they're doing. I uh, I mentioned on, so I jumped on Ben Coombs live stream. Ben Coombs is a Canadian YouTuber, a guitar YouTuber. He does Canucks with guitars. Yeah, uh, I I, ch- I I hop in there as often oh, okay. as I can. Yeah, so uh, yeah. I mentioned last night that what I suspect happened for no reasons other than kind of putting two and two together. I suspect that in, because they skipped 2021, mm-hmm. maybe they had some kind of maybe that was like a contract year or or maybe okay. because they skipped a year they they lost their contract and so they didn't renew soon enough. And basically they, then they went to the convention center and had to say, well, what do you have available? And so then they took yeah. June and then they took April. Excuse me. So I think the goal is to get back to January. They're January is supposed to be 2024, but I suspect what happened is they just lost the slot. Whereas if they would have maintained their contract every single year, then that weekend is always guaranteed. Again, I don't have any inside information that's just from that's reading the tea leaves throwing the bones <laughs> i mean that's that's a that's a real possibility i get yeah. it you know i can i can i can see those figures in the in the flames i, but, I opened up the newspaper um, one day and it said aries nam 2023 will be in april <laughs> <laughs> man that's a horoscope with some pointed ideas yeah. um, that one's just but yeah, so Gear, well, Gear Fest, I you know, it's tough because one of the things that they did say, and I, I don't think this is like, you know, I think people can take what they want. I, the, I don't think this is particularly secret, designed to be secret information, is yeah. running P- Gear Fest the way it used to, where they would have, I think, 10, 15, 20,000 people out there for like two days, um, took, from what they described, it took every single person at Sweetwater to run that event. Yeah. I, I can only imagine that's a lot yeah. of people. Whereas honestly, like that, I mean, there were probably a, I would guess the number of people involved with the influencer focused one that I, I kind of hate that word, but I don't know what else to use. Like the, or the creator, it's, it's you know, influencer creator you space um, that was out there. It was probably maybe like one Sweetwater employee per every two influencers or creators or whatever. So at the end of the day, um, you have the, you had the main uh, marketing team, which is like, I don't know, six or seven people that at least that we interacted with. There's like three main people on that marketing team that we work with. 
Um, and maybe a, a few people that were like run their vid, like do video specific for them. Uh, so in total, they, they probably, I would guess, yeah, they probably dedicated like 20 or 30 employees to the running the, the nuts and bolts of this creator gear fest. Whereas before, from what I understand, it was like on top of your All hands. sales engineer, like <laughs> shift, you also spent like two or three hours out at gear fest, just making sure that some guy who, you know, didn't dehydrate or something. And then I think right. the last two, uh, so not this, even actually this past year, I think it rained. It rained when we went out there. And I think it rained the day we left. So we missed it for like the actual portion of it. But I, I think it was Gear Fest. Wampler talked about it on his show like two years ago mm -hmm. where it rained one day and like flooded the entire parking lot uh, in like an hour. And so they had to basically like batten down the hatches for an hour. And then afterwards it stopped raining. So they started everything back up, but it's Indiana in late June, early July, which is already, you know, 90 degrees and a hundred percent humidity. And then it rains. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, from what I understand, it was pretty miserable. Um, so I, I don't, I don't really know if they're going to go back to that. I I'd like to see them at least do some kind of hybrid situation, but it is tough because that it's would like be cool. once you, you know, do you charge people to make it worth Sweetwater's time? You know, do you like, what do you do to make this worth everyone's, everyone's time? Yeah. Cause I'm know? sure in the early days, the sales they would get during that week or weekend were made it worth it. But if it grows too big, suddenly yeah. it becomes untenable. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Well, we'll see what it holds. But, you know, I, I can't go to NAM next year because the weekend they moved it to is the same weekend as the Blues Festival I got mm. COVID during. Um, but it's a Blues <laughs> Festival. I have I have played that Blues Festival. Some some years I played upwards of eight or nine gigs during that Blues wow. Festival in, in three days. Jeez. Um, but I've played that Blues Festival every year it's existed. And mm -hmm. so I'm not willing to break that streak. You know, some things you just, you don't mess with. Yeah, and that's yeah. one of them. So I'm not going to get to go to NAM next year. So I'm really hoping something with Gear Fest that I can actually attend would be kind of cool. Uh, if not, I'm thinking about trying to make like the Dallas Guitar Show or something like that. Yeah. That You know, I've never been to the Dallas I've Guitar Show. I've always heard that one's really good. Yeah. Um, I would like to, I mean, I don't know what it looks like. I don't, you know... Ryan, with both of us kind of do, being like, well, I have a full-time job. This is kind of a side gig for me. For Ryan, 60 Cycle Hum is a full-time. That's his full-time job. Right. So, you know, a lot of time, a lot of the time things like, um, and this is, you know, this is our, I guess, a, a pet peeve, right? Um, for Ryan, it's a full-time job. So if he says like, well, let's go to Dallas Guitar Show. Like that is not a decision to be made lightly um, for him because uh, and because that's if he goes and he makes content and he doesn't have any plans, he's just going to go make content. If he sees something cool, film it. Right. Um, right. And then he comes home and now he's got to edit that stuff. So what happens is you fly out. I don't know how many days Dallas Guitar Show is, but say everything included, he loses a work a week of work. He gets back. He's now got to edit the footage from the Guitar Show, which is depending on how many videos he made. Say he made, uh, say he can edit two videos a day. So if he makes fifteen videos, he can edit all of that in a week on a crunch. He's now lost two weeks of act actual work actual paying of like paying know work. that it's right. paying work so yeah. then people come out and they say like oh like all you have on your channel is sponsored content it's all sponsored content it's like well and it's something we're trying to get we're trying to get back to um like zero space um because yeah it, it's for hit for us it's like tough to be able to not be able to say like well let's do something you know let's just do something stupid let's make a goofy video let's 
just have a video that's yeah. grab five random effects off the back wall. Like maybe let's do a thing where we open up to the. Let's toss an to, Epiphone off a bridge. Yeah, well, I think we got paid for that. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't remember actually. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's uh, maybe you open something up to to Patreon and you say, hey, everybody, uh, vote on your top five effects, and whatever gets the most votes will make a video featuring those five effects in a chain. You you lose the ability to do fun stuff like that when, uh, when you've it's and it's not just about paid work existing, right? It's not just about yeah. getting paid yeah. to make the videos. It's also about just having a backlog where you feel like you need to get through your paid work before you can do fun stuff. So um, yeah. we're trying we're trying to get there. Um, I like I said I'd like to do some other or send Ryan out to some of these other shows, um, but it's a matter of of planning everything out ahead of time. And, and a lot of times those uh, shows aren't super conducive to going out and filming and stuff. So it, it becomes kind of tough too. So, yeah, I like, so I haven't been to, to Dallas, um, guitar show. Well, Dallas have is, friends who Dallas have is and, in Texas. It's, uh, it's, the, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it is, I think it's second, a terrible place to drive city. And is it, I've, I've driven from, it's, uh, from love field to Plano and that's all I really can remember. It, it is the second largest, un unless by some weird fluke, San Antonio passed it. Um, but it's it's oh, it's a terrible place to drive. Don't do it <laughs> if you can avoid it. Um, Atlanta is the only place worse that I know of. Uh, which I'm going to Atlanta this week. Actually, when this episode airs, right, I'll be right, in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, but I haven't been to it. But I have lots of friends who have. It seems really cool. The thing I like about it is you get to see a lot of smaller builders mm. there. Um, you also like you can make deals like if you right. take a couple grant, if you have money, if you have a little money and you're like, oh, well, I want to go see what the what's the raddest thing I can find for 500 bucks. You know what I mean? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm taking this much money. It's like going to the casino and like I've got twenty dollars. I'm going to put it in a slot machine and just see. Yeah. Um, it's like I've got I've got this little bit of gear money that I've squirreled away. Let's see what I can wheel and deal. Get the coolest thing I can find at Dallas Guitar Show. So that's what I want to go check that out. Maybe next year, if if I can't do Gear Fest because I don't I don't make money doing this. I lose money making this podcast, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's it's a big expense for me if I go. That's like a vacation, like w w but it's a vacation in which I'm going to try to work and actually meet people, get guests for the podcast, try to find some sponsors. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's that's my next goal next year is really actively trying to find sponsors for the podcast. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, we're, we're nearing the end. So I want to ask, I, so I asked in the discord oh, chat, yeah, yeah. uh, which, which you are in the discord chat as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it listeners, if you want to join the discord, you do not have to be a Patreon supporter to join the discord. Just hop in, hang out with us, talk gear. It's fun. We talk other things too. Uh, we talk food and beer and, you know, uh, we try to find great deals for each other. It's actually a really great place for some of you 60 cycle hum folks who yeah. are always looking for, for deals on stuff. But uh, so I asked the question, I said, you were going to be on. And if they had any questions, we're going to skip that one. Cause we're going to end on that one. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk, we'll talk about your alter ego. Oh, at the end. Right, right, right. So, so uh, uh, Rick from honey picks mm -hmm. had asked, um, you've been doing the podcast for a long time, which we've discussed. Right. How do you not, how do you stay inspired or not get burned out? Um, I think the key is, and this this is a thing that I, you know, I think the key is that the content is is always fresh. You know, it's the gear world. There's always something new happening, even though we don't really cover new stuff. Sometimes it's uh, we we you know we talk about news we make fun of the most the episode that dropped today uh was uh and this is a thing ryan and i have been doing it's kind of it's very annoying uh i think <laughs> ryan and i are both the kind of people who like to be intentionally annoying which also plays into this uh the the headline for this one was is tim henson the new bonamassa uh, yes, uh, it, what a clickbait title! But he's been saying stuff that's like, "Oh, I don't use boomer bands," or like, "Oh, yeah, he, he did." Being in a metal band sucks because you don't make money. Like, 
if that's no, if those aren't Joe Bonamassa type statements, I don't know what are, you know, right. You know, <laughs> the difference is Tim Henson's like 27 years old or whatever. Like he's a, he's a, he's a, right, young right. Guy. He's young. Um, so there's, there's, you know, y'all did, I, I want to mention this because y'all did like this series of like three or four. I'm going to show my age a little bit here too. So y'all did these like, three or four in a row episodes with a similar title. Oh yeah. And where yeah. it's like, does, does Paul Reed Smith deserve signature pedals? Does a seahorse deserve a signature guitar? Do, you know, you did like it's a stupid. whole string of it. these. It's so stupid. It reminded me though, of like the satirical guitar podcast version. Do you remember? I, I don't know if you're really into comic books. I was, I was really into comic books coming up and I remember the episode where Bane broke Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the episode where Bane broke Bruce Wayne over his knee and snapped his right. back. And there was like, there was like this series of three covers. Mm -hmm. And I think they were all three sequential episode, uh, episodes, uh, issues where it was Bane with Batman over his knee. Then it was Bane with Robin <laughs> over his knee. And then it was, the new Batman, like uh, Night Hawk, I can't remember what they called him at, right now. Right, but with with Robin over his knee, <laughs> and then there was like, like they did like this whole series of, of of issues where like some character had some other character doing a backbreaker, yeah. the, you yeah. know, like old school WWE style. Oh, man. It was like it just got more ridiculous as it went on, and that's what I thought of immediately. Like by the third, I mean, I mean, third show. There, there's stuff like that. Like the Paul Reed Smith one was particularly fun <laughs> because it's like, well, it's not a signature pedal, but it's also like no. <laughs> for all of these, it's like, you know, does so and so, uh, you know, the at the core, and this is what, what I love so much about it is I, I think um, one of the first ones in that series was, does Rick Beato deserve a signature guitar? Because that's the yeah, question. I think that was the start. That was the question that like so many people were asking on the forums is like, what the, you know, this is awesome or this is the worst or whatever. And at the end of the day, Ryan and I, like our take on these, especially on like anybody having a signature or anything is like, who cares? It's, it's marketing right. either buy it or don't right. like just recognize right. it for what it is. It's marketing. Somebody in a marketing department has decided that this person is a big enough brand uh, that they can have a mutually beneficial relationship, you know, and good, bad, like ESP hat, has a Hatsune, Hatsune Miku signature guitar. <laughs> she doesn't exist. Right. She's made up. But she but she up. has a signature guitar, you know. <laughs> uh, it's it's just good marketing. It, well, it's like it, the um the Billie Eilish ukulele. Yeah, is that yeah. is that right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, maybe I missed it. Does Billie Eilish play ukulele? In the marketing for that, she says that that uh, most of her songs start out on ukulele. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. She, but I've never seen her like publicly playing. Yeah, I think it's like because it's like uh you know if she ever does like an acoustic session or something, You're then right. maybe she'll be when playing. she does her MTV unplug. Yeah, exactly. Um, um so but yeah, no, it, it's so so to me it's like who you know, who cares? And and then the more ridiculousness, like does Seahorse deserve a signature guitar? <laughs> Or whatever. Um, I love it. You know, I love it so much. I don't know what's on the docket for this week. We're we're supposed to record this week, but it's like, yeah. I, I told Ryan. I said, if you can't come up with the clickbait title, it's just I'm just gonna make whatever we talk about. Uh, does X deserve Y? <laughs> like, if you yeah, can't come it. up with something, I'm just gonna make does X deserve Y, and uh, and that's gonna be the title. That that'll work. So uh, over in Discord, Mike asked, um, and, and I'm going to put some parameters around this because y'all have had some really wild stuff. And he says, what's the craziest guitar you have found? So I'm going to say, what? because if you sit here and think, you're going to sit here and try to decide, like, oh, was this crazier than that? Yeah, oh, no, yeah. that was crazy. I, I, what's I the first thing that pops in your head? What's the um, first one that popped in your head? I mean, I think the first thing that pops into my head is the one that I, I referenced earlier 
uh, was the uh, birth, the birth death cycle painted on an acoustic guitar. And yes. Anytime people paint their own guitars, it's always wild. Uh, we also had the one recently that was English Breakfast. Uh, oh yeah, can, you know, had the blood sausage, yeah, and, and, and Ryan ooh. and I were going back and forth trying to decide if something was bacon or if it was ham. Apparently, it was bacon. <laughs> Uh, all the Brits were like, that's bacon. That's what it looks like here. And I'm like, all right, man, whatever. I don't know. Um, wow. Yeah, a lot of those. Um, so all this time we've been calling ham Canadian bacon. We should have been calling it British bacon. Yes. Uh, well, the problem to me, though. The art- I'm so sorry to my UK listeners. Oh, the, actually, the, the best part, I forgot. The best part of that one is we couldn't figure out what the knobs were. The knobs were oh, mushrooms yeah. because apparently – Mushrooms are the what uh, the uh, the best you know uh, what, what's the what's the saying that they always have on the cereal commercials? Like, mushrooms are are part of a balanced breakfast. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> fungus is part of a balanced so, breakfast. So uh, absolutely, yeah. It, it's always it's always something like that, or it's something where um, uh, you know somebody put put built something into a guitar that they shouldn't have the the again this week's episode featured a uh pvt60 that somebody uh attached a casio dg20 to um so they made it heavier yes well they removed some of the wood and replaced it with plastic so i don't know i'm not sure if it's heavier or not Oh man! But there's, I All mean, right. again, it's so, like 400 episodes, 450 episodes. It's hard, it's hard to remember. Yeah, of of something ridiculous every episode. Yeah, something. Yeah. And and look, I come from a world of blues folk art, so I've seen some wild things, and um, especially things that have been, uh, like the things people. So I used to. I, I grew up knowing a guy and I've played with him a bunch, uh, but he's, he's his own thing. I never like played as part of his band. It was mm-hmm. just sitting in and you know, hanging out uh, a guy by the name of James Johnson. He goes by the moniker super chicken and he <laughs> builds, he builds all of his own guitars. Like he used to, used to play just plain old guitars. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but at some point he um, decided to start building his own. So he would just atta- either attach necks mm-hmm. or he would just, string things across lag bolts and play slide on it right Right. yeah yeah um and so but like he made one out of a ceiling fan like the the center round part of a ceiling fan i'm gonna i'll send you pictures i will send you pictures um he made one out of a shovel uh he made a guitar out of a shotgun he couldn't fly with that one for (laughs) obvious reasons um I mean, he's made uh, his. He got started though making them out of gas cans, like the Jeep yeah. style metal okay. gas cans. So he would make gas can guitars, and um, it's just a giant cigar it's, box. It's exactly, basically, that's what he's doing. He's making oddball cigar box guitars, and he plays them all live. Like yeah. he'll be yeah. have a stage full of like fifteen of them and pick them up for different songs, and it's a whole Good thing. Grief. So you, there's ton. I think there's tons on YouTube. I'm saying that now, but. There's YouTube uh, of uh, of Super Chicken. That's Chicken C H I K A N, not the normal spelling. Um, he's a he's a hoot. He's a lot of fun. If you see him playing at a, he travels the country uh, playing blues festivals and gigs. So if you see him, you got to go check him out. He's a riot. Um, but yeah, so it, a lot of the stuff y'all I've seen a lot of that stuff. So some of the wilder stuff y'all see, I'm like, oh no, this is right at home yeah, with the yeah. stuff I'm used to seeing. Um, all right, last question. Sure. We need to talk about your alter ego. Yeah, yeah. We we need to talk about Super Rich Steve. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't really remember how that started. <laughs> <laughs> I I think because we let, well first let let's settle all the debates. Mm-hmm. I know there's been wide ranging arguments. <laughs> um, you're not actually super rich. No, no, um, <laughs> no. I mean, you make that scientist money. I know, but no. Um, if, well, if I was super rich, I wouldn't have moved out of out of town. Um, That's true. But uh, yeah, so it's the idea on one of the episodes. I think you know the question was posed. Um, you know, every once in a while, you look at a, you look at a a guitar 
and you say, well, if money was no object. And I think yeah. either Ryan or I said like, well, if I was super rich, I would do this. And it was just so like, because the whole premise of super rich Steve is that super rich Steve will pay people to destroy these things that they claim to love that they have to sell. <laughs> and so the, you know, there's, there's two versions of super rich Steve. There's the super rich Steve that, um, well, you know, the guy wants a thousand dollars for this guitar that's worth three hundred dollars, and instead of giving right. him a thousand dollars, Super Rich Steve offers him a hundred thousand um, dollars, and then either takes it and then spends another, you know, twenty thousand dollars sending that guitar to Gibson to have it Murphy labbed, kind of a thing, right? <laughs> um, to make it the or or for, I, the greatest. I version seem to of that. distinctly remember. At one where it was like, you know, hate to sell it, love this guitar, and he's like overselling it for like double or triple yeah. what it's worth, and then you're like paying him to smash yeah, it. Yeah, no, like and, you're and like, so that, no, I'll pay you more than it's worth. And so that's the other version is okay. You know, you want five thousand, I'll give you fifty thousand, but I'm going to show up in like a Lamborghini, uh, and I'm going to take the guitar back out to my Lamborghini, but instead of putting it into the the uh do lamborghinis have trunks i don't know i i, I, I don't think, know <laughs> i feel like they have the hood the hood trunk like Possibly. because i think they're a rear engine vehicle so instead of putting it in the guitar or whatever in the tr in the hood trunk i just put it on the back of the car and pull out a uh a, a can of gasoline out of the out of the <laughs> trunk and then light it on fire and when the person freaks out i'm like i just gave you fifty thousand dollars this is mine now so <laughs> I don't know what you're complaining about. It's a very destructive, uh, like, you know, it's, it's, it's throwing the Epiphone off of a bridge, but instead I'm throwing a 1958 Les Paul off of a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen a, uh, have you ever seen that? That hole just gave me a flash. Have you ever seen the movie pool hall junkies? No. What is that? What? I've oh, never even heard oh, of man. it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, we're going to go down a rabbit hole for a second. We are we're way over time, but this is worth it. I don't want to save this for Patreon. Um, so listeners, you're welcome. Pool Hall Junkies, this is awesome. Like late 80s, early 90s movie, I feel like. Maybe it's late 90s. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's low production value, but it's got Christopher Walken in it. Yeah. And, and it's about this guy who's this incredible pool player. And he wanted to go pro, but the guy who was managing at the time was this like shyster who like when the invite to the pro tour came, he tossed it and made him a hustler instead. Hmm. Right. And so he's just hustling people for money. Um, anyway, I'm not going to give away the entire plot, but like there's this whole mo actually I'm going to give away the ending. <laughs> so I'm just going to yeah, it's well, it's sort of I'm going to give away like the best scene because I'll tell you why you made me think of it. So listeners, if you're going to go watch Pool Hall Junkies and you care about this ending and you don't want me to spoil a 30 plus year old movie um, or 25, however old it is. Um, Pause here. Go watch the movie. Come back. Apparently, uh, it's, it's, apparently on it's on YouTube. The whole movie's on YouTube. It's also on yeah, Amazon. the entire movie. It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, with, and it's, with ads. It's free on YouTube. Okay, just you just watch the whole thing, and it's not that long. It's under an hour and a half, I think. Um, so, so at towards the end, there's this like whole scene where Christopher Walken, like the kids, the guys dumped his manager, and now his manager's picked up this pro who's trying to beat him, and like. <laughs> There's like all this money on the table for this bet, right? And uh, Christopher Walken like has these great monologue speeches. There's one about a lion. He's like, you ever watch those documentaries on the TV? Yeah. There's one about the lion. And he's so big and he's so hot. And the sun's beaming down. You don't want to move. <laughs> and he goes on this whole thing about how eventually the lion has to show the jackals and the hyenas who he is. And he said, don't just beat him. Kick his ass. <laughs> and so then he goes out there. <laughs> so it's so good. It's so good. And so there at the end, he goes out there and he makes a, sh he makes a shot. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. He misses his shot. And and they're playing they're playing nine ball. They're not playing eight ball pool. They're playing like you know grown adult pool nine balls. <laughs> that's the way to go. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Um, so he he misses the shot and it sets up this difficult shot for the next guy, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so the guy's sitting there staring at it. Oh, which by the way, the 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 other the pool like pro is the guy from Silver Spoons. Uh, right. if you Ricky remember that Schroeder. old TV yeah. show. Yeah, Ricky Schroeder. It's Ricky Schroeder. So um he's looking at the shot, he's trying to line it up, he starts to shoot it, and the guy's like, Come on, you gonna shoot it already? He said, I he said, I wish this was your shot, and he's like just egging him on. He said, Yeah, I wish that was my shot too. Pay good money for a shot like that. He said, Oh, you think you can make it? He said, Yeah. He said, Well, what's it? And so the the guy who used to manage said, What's it worth to you? Think you can make that shot. And so he they they he talks him into betting him that he can't make that shot, right? And um so he bets him that he can't make that shot, and he says, Oh, well, I don't know, that's a two grand shot. So they toss some money on the table. And he misses the shot. Like the guy steps aside, the pro, you know Ricky Schroeder steps aside. He takes the shot and he misses. And he's like, ah, oh, dang it! And he lost like two and a half grand, right? And uh, he says, and Ricky Schroeder goes to take another shot. Says, see, I told you you couldn't make that shot. And he put his stick in front of him, and stops him, and says, uh, uh-uh, it's my shot. He said, no, you just missed. He said, no, 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 <laughs> I just paid twenty five hundred dollars for your shot. Now it's my shot. Nice. And he wins the like whatever like five figure they've got on the table plus the dude's car. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like yeah, no, it, I just paid you for that guitar. <laughs> I can do what I want with it. <laughs> God, that was a long story for that point. Everyone's still I'm so here. Sorry. Everyone's gonna go watch it. <laughs> I love that movie so way more than I should. Way way more than I should. Yes, it is on YouTube. Please go watch sure. it. Well, Steve, thanks for coming on the show, man. We're gonna go. We're gonna go talk a little more over on the Patreon. And uh, remember, listeners, to get the Patreon, just go over to patreon.com slash forty watt podcast, where you can support this show <laughs> for five dollars a month. Um, I get some part of that after all the fees, uh, and uh, you will get an extra episode every week or every week that I put out a show because I'm trying to be more consistent. I'm doing what I can, y'all. Life's hard. Um, in the meantime. Y'all be sure to be good to yourselves, be kind to each other, and make some noise.